hopefully you've managed to knit all your pieces um, your first step now is to join the front to the back uh, I've joined both shoulders here if you were doing a neck band you'd only join one shoulder before you did the neck band but because the neck bands already on I've joined both shoulders and now to put the sleeves on now you're going to attach the sleeve head between those yarn markers that you put in on the front and the back ignore the white waist knitting that I've got because I as I mentioned in the other video do mine um, slightly differently if you've cast off then you need to join a sleeve to one side and then a sleeve to the other side for those who are interested um, you'll recall yesterday I said I took my sleeve heads off on waist yarn I've now rehung that sleeve head with the right side facing me you can see that's because my yarn tail that long yarn tail I told you to to have is on the left hand side if that yarn tail for whatever reason because I'd finished on an odd row had been on the right side I would have hung my sleeve uh, my main body first so that the yarn tail ended up on the left because I am right handed and I'm going to do a latch tool cast off so when I've put the other piece on I will knit a row so that the yarn tail ends up this side and I cast off with the latch tool going from left to right if you're right handed if you're left handed sorry you need to do it in the opposite way as you can see I've now hung the actual garment on the machine I'm now going to knit a row at the loosest tension my tension dial will go to and then I'm going to latch tool it off and hopefully you can see that's the sleeve head joined that's before giving a steam or a wash so that's picked up reasonably neatly um, never take your waste yarn out before you've checked it when you've got your other sleeve on you fold it so it starts looking like a proper jumper and I usually start at one end or the other and seam up what I should have told you is I usually leave an extremely long tail at cast on as well and use that to mattress stitch those seams and I will show you how that's done I'm not sure how well this video is videoing is going to work and whether you'll be able to see properly uh, I'm going to show you how to do mattress stitch to join your side and sleeve seams you do mattress stitch from the right side so you take the yarn tail from one side you bring it up through the very end stitch where you are going to start joining you bring it up the same sort of column that you're going to use there and then that's two sides together and you literally go backwards and forwards um, and I'm hoping you can see you go back down on the opposite side where you came up and you pick up two loops of the knitting there and then you come back to the other side and you pick up two loops there then you go back to the other side and pick up two loops two bars should I say back down the original side there and pick up two loops there two bars I'll stop saying loops and every so often 
because you've got you looking like that. You pull, you pull your yarn and tighten it. And as you can see, we've, we've started a join. I'll do a, a bit more just to show you. It's going to be easier on the stocking stitch bit. So back down the opposite side, pick up two loops, over to the other side, down where you came out from, pick up two loops. Back over to the other side, down the hole it came out of, pick up two bars. Back over to the other side, pick up two loops. And every so often, you need to tighten it. Not too tight, don't pull it too tight. I'll carry on with that and I'll show you on the stocking net. Right, I hope you can see that seam now. That looks reasonably neat. And, more importantly, um, it's lined up. The two sides have lined up. I'm now going to try and show you. You just carry on in the same way, going down that one. Always do this stitch in, you know, from the edge. Pick up those two bars. Go back down the other side that you came out of. If I can find it. And pick up two bars. These are the two bars that are in between a stitch, as you, uh, hopefully you can see. Go in there, back out there. In there. This allows you to do a very even uh, seam that should be virtually invisible. Once you've done it, I'm now going to pull that up, and again, if you can see, the seam is now the seam is there and looking almost invisible. I'll carry on and do a bit more. Hope you can now see how the seam is going. I think you'll agree it looks reasonably. Um, this is actually the seam here. As you can see, it looks reasonably um, invisible. This is the other side of that seam. Not flat, but that's fine. A, a jumper and you just continue to do that all the way along the edge so don't pull it too tightly if you pull it too tightly just sort of stretch it out a bit so you don't want it to pucker up try and see if I get a slightly better close-up for you so I've come out of this side and I'm going to go into this side where I came out from and pick up two bars on the opposite side then I go across to the other side down back where I came out from and pick up two bars Then across and 
where I came out from pick up two bars you can pick up three if you want it depends how delicate your uh, garments go is if you're using chunky you could probably do three come up there go back down that's where we came out of there go back down that one and up that one across down where you came out of just make sure you're keeping in a straight line on the same stitch I mean it's quite easy to see and this is where the doing the fully fashioned increases just pull that up when you do the fully fashioned increases it keeps that um, on the sleeves it keeps that straight edge that you can pick up on